for Gaza Presents In Conversation With. I'm your host, David Batsoffen, and my guest today, all the way from Hootsbreak, is the winner of Safari Guide of the Year 2013, Tom Emery. Tom, how are you doing? Marvelous, David. Thank you for asking. Talk to me, firstly, what's it like in Hootsbreak today? Um, Hootsbreak is... Um... Hutzbreit, Hutzbreit. It's a uh, <laughs> obviously it's uh, it's been um, it's it's been a weird town to be in for the for the last year. It, it's normally um, a little bit of a hustle and bustle with sort of tourists. Um, you know, the the Danes and the Germans and the French um, marching up and down the road buying sort of curios. Um, but um, so it's been a little bit quiet and a, a slightly different flavour to things at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, but um, but no, it, it's great. We've had a We've had a very wet year for for a change after um, a couple of years of um, terrible drought and everybody moaning. Um, this year we've we've had plenty of rain and uh, the place is uh, crawling with scorpions and snakes and um, it's been relatively cool. But it's um, no, it's uh, it's yeah. it great. The Chris Leemings and the Johan Marais of the world must be flocking to your neighbourhood to find all these creepy crawlies and slithery things. No, there, there will be, and and a lot of the Facebook pages are. Can you identify this, or or can I handle that? Um, so, um, and the short answer is don't. If you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Exactly, it's and, exactly. Uh, can you identify the snake skin, please? And then um, just everybody, please don't shout mumba at the same time. Yeah. Tom, take us back to 2013 and the run up to Safari Guide of the Year. Sure, David. So, look, it's a hell of a long time ago, and I, I actually haven't been in the industry for um, for for a number of years now. But um, at 2013, I was uh, living at Londolozi with with my wife and my two kids, who would have been aged five and seven at the time, and um, we'd we'd been living at Londolozi since about 2004. So, uh, a reasonably experienced guide had been there for about nine years. Um, we were very comfortable um, and and kind of uh, we were loving life. Um, it, it's a great, I mean, it's a it's a fabulous environment to um, to get married and to raise children and um, you know to you know to live without locking mm. doors and you know, all of the general stresses about shopping and what what have you. Um, but I, I guess we were we, we had slightly itchy feet. We were you know the the kids had to go to Hazy View from Londolozi. Um, you know, they had, they had to go to school in Hazyview every day. So it was about a three hour sort of round trip, um, early mornings, late evenings. Um, and so we were, we were thinking about doing something different, but um, at the time, um, my wife, all of my sins was actually my boss. She was my head ranger. <laughs> and um, That's a whole I different conversation for a different- uh, for It, a it different is. And, and, the, and, the, and there are some amusing um, stories Floating around the industry about various disciplinary hearings that were chaired by her with me as the as the culprit. But anyway, <laughs> exactly uh, stories for a different time. But um, anyway, she she had been approached, I think, by by Brian at um, Fagasa and in cahoots with the general manager at Londolozi at the time, Chris Gan Berman. I, I think they had agreed to um, send me on um safari guide of the year and i was i was completely unaware and blindsided by it and and um quite quite rightly furious when i'd heard because um, <laughs> I, I i can i can tend towards being quite shy at times um but um yeah so that, that was the start of the journey I, I i think i only probably had about sort of 12 weeks um from finding out that um i, I was going on it to to being on it and um I, also needed to brush up on a few, on a few particular areas. I mean, it, it's uh, guiding for as long as I had. I mean, there, there were lots of things that I absolutely loved in the bush, like mm. like stars and wild flowers and a, a little bit of geology and trees and and, and lots of other things. But um, I, I'd neglected bird calls and tracking and and, and various sort of stuff. So I, I was I was thrust on a very um, sort of sharp learning curve where I, I spent a lot of time um, with with my tracker and um, Jerry Hambana. And um, one of the senior trackers at Londolozi at the time, Richard Sawella, um, they, they helped me brush up on my tracking. Um, and I started to pay attention um, to as many um, bird calls as I could. And in fact, I cut up an entire Roberts. I cut all of the, um, and I got the kids to 
we, we cut all of the pictures of the birds out and treated it like a big pack of cards and shuffled them and dad had to guess what they were. It was, it was a lot of fun at the time, but, um, but, but taking it back, you asked me where I was. So, so that was um, this, the whole competition had sort of been thrust on me and I, I sort of begrudgingly went off um, and ended up having a, a, a whale of a time, I have to say. Take me, let's go back one step if I can. Before Safari Guide of the Year, before Londolozi, take me back to Tom Imri at high school. Did you know what you wanted to be when you hit matric? Or grade twelve, whatever it was back then, for you? No, no, not at not at all. Um, and and I was still suffering from that same confusion at about the age of thirty when I when I arrived at Londolosi or twenty nine. Um, I, I guess at school I, um, I, I I had a deep love affair with the game of golf, and I, I had a father who desperately wanted me to be a lawyer. So um, straight after school, while I was supposed to be at law school, I was mostly on the golf course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and those those two things will never gel well together. So um, I ended up becoming a um, part-time carpenter um, and eventually a very middling professional golfer, um, or, or more specifically, a, a, a teaching professional. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I, I guess I guess if you just if you want me to continue the story, um, I, I was deeply fortunate to meet the love of my life. And, and wife run about the same sort of time. I, I think we met at the very tender age of 19. Right. Um, and Kate, um, who's also a phenomenal guide and a, and a ranger trainer and um, head, head guide through, through her sort of time. Um, we were in Johannesburg. Kate was um, a horse riding instructor, managing a stable yard in, in um, sort of Northern Johannesburg. Um, I, I was a, a struggling golfer and we kind of had our sporting careers, I, I guess, kind of around the road. We, we woke up one morning and we needed something different to do. Fair enough. Um, and we were fortunate. Yeah. And we, um, we, we had some friends who pointed us in the right direction. We ended up um, um, interviewing with uh, CC Africa at the time. Um, and um, after that interview, I, I think within about three weeks, we packed up the flat and we were um, shivering in Pinder um, <laughs> on a Ranger training course, and um, and and that's really how we, we got into the guiding industry. But it, it was completely by accident. I, um, you know, Kate and I often went um, to the bush on sort of holidays, but there was no, there, there was never really sort of any thought that that would be where we would wind up. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was purely accidental and completely marvelous. Yeah, you said that uh, Safari Guide of the Year was a big adventure for you, um, and. Were you able to have fun? Look, Safari Guide of the Year is hard. Um, it's a tough week. It's a busy week for the nominees um, or the participants, the judges, everybody who's there. Did, were you, did you feel under pressure constantly during the week? Or did you have time just to sort of step back a little bit and go, hang on a second. This is never going to happen for me again. So let me just enjoy and, and take from it what I can because of the people that who are... Um, around me here, as we, you know, while you were while you were there. So I, I, I think on on reflection, um, now it, it it was an enormous amount of fun, and 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 I, and I say that because I think of the the people I met and the um, you know the the interactions I I sort of still have, um, but but at the time it it was um, it was nerve wracking and and. Uh, it's the same human sort of condition. I, I think we all get nervous about public speaking or having the spotlight shone on us or, um, you know, and, and, and you arrive there and there's a video camera in your face and um, everybody is, is sort of nervous. Um, there, there, were, there was definitely um, some nerve wracking, tense sort of elements about it. But, um, and I, I think possibly being slightly older than, than some of the other guides and um, having spent a lot of time, you know, it's one of the great things about guiding is that you learn how to relax when you um, are presenting. Right. Um, so, so after a little while, it, it it does become familiar, and I th there were a couple of things that helped out with it as well. I, I know that um, James James Stain, who um, um, who's often at that. I mean, he's 
always desperate for a game of touch rugby. So um, <laughs> there was, you know, it's nothing better than to to run around and laugh and throw a rugby ball around. Um, and there's a fabulously well-stocked bar there with with lots of interesting characters telling stories. Where did you? Where was um, Safari Guide of the Year 2013 held? Oh, we momentarily seem to have lost Tom, uh, but we will no doubt pick it up momentarily. And Tom's back with us. Tom, you froze there for a moment. I asked you where the uh, competition had taken place. Um, <laughs> have I put you on the spot? You have. I've, I have absolutely no recollection of where it was. That's a, what? Uh, no, I, I do. I'm, it's, um, it's outside the Numbi Gate. Oh, okay. It's the most, and, it, and it's actually quite a, um, it's quite a phenomenal story because it's, it's community land. Um, there's a wonderful guy there, Chris, who I think is in charge of the whole thing. I, I, I'm presuming it's still there, um, where, where the community and um, some private equity have got together to create um, quite a, a sort of a fantastic model, which I found particularly um, in, intriguing. And I, I, I cite it often when we, we talk about things. Um, but being outside the Nombi Gate, it's very close to um, the old, old busy runes. And um, there are, I think, Pretorius Corp. There, there, there's some marvelous, marvelous um, sort of granite monoliths around. And um, it, 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 it's a particularly beautiful area, which is, which is quite fun to explore as a guide because um, my only other guiding experience had always been in the Salvi Sands. So even if we were only removed by about 60 kilometers, um, it was still completely new and quite novel. Yeah, the, the sneaky thing about uh, Safari Guide of the Year 2019 and 2021 for that matter, is that it's going to be held, drum roll he says, um, and it's the 10th anniversary at the NJ Moore Field Guide uh, College, which is in the Waterberg. And now in 2019, None of the guides that uh, none of the nominees knew this biome at all because they were either from the Karoo or from the Lowfeld. So for them, it was all a level playing field. And it was rather interesting to watch everybody in the same boat, basically. Yeah, and, and that is really interesting, actually, because I, I, I definitely remember it was at Inconveni that um, we were certainly the, the guides. You know, some of us that were from the low fault, we're, we're definitely in an advantageous position over, um, you know, some of the guys who came from a bit further afield, um, mm. like Cape or, or, or a little bit further. Um, yeah, no, so that's 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 fantastic. I, I think Waterberg will be a um, tremendous um, challenge um, and, and lots of fun, and particularly those dry winter months, it'll be fabulous up there. Yeah, because it's 26 June to 2nd July, so it can be, as they say in the classics, rather cold um, at that time of the year. <laughs> Thanks, more than one layer um, up there. And, and the tents are not the warmest of tents. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, Tom, do you have any words of wisdom for the overall nominees? Because there are going to be a group of people who are going to be shortlisted for the top five. So, and I've asked previous winners about top five, you know, what, what are their words for those? But what about for all of those people who are shortlisted? What have you got to say to them? David, yeah, that's a good question. I, I think, um, and it, if I remember our competition, I, I, I think we arrived and we were, we were handed some, um, some jackets and you know, we were introduced to each other. We were told what the format of the competition was going to be. And 45 minutes later, we were sitting in a bird test and with eggs <laughs> and fence and stuff. And, and, and you could, you know, for some people after the birding test, there was this immediate sense of deflation because they thought they had completely stuffed it up and that they were suddenly out of the running 45 minutes into, you know, into the whole competition. And um, the, the truth is to be Safari Guide of the Year or to be in the top five, you don't actually need to to win everything. Yeah. Um, you know, you're always going to come up against somebody who's a better shot or um, is a more entertaining storyteller or um, you know, who could track absolutely anything back to its den. Um, but but there are a lot of different aspects of the competition. And and I'm sure the fact that they've
been chosen to be there that they they will be or they will certainly excel or be very proficient in some of them so so the thing to remember is is that um, you need to you know try your hardest at absolutely everything um, you need to relax if you um, you know if you feel like you've muddled your words or you've made a bad shot or um, whatever it is and, and just understand that the competition is is balanced over all of the the different aspects of the competition. Um, and that's what they're really looking for. They're, they're not looking for first place and everything. Um, and so that's so that's a, yeah. And what about second cup of coffee before you go and do ARH? Yeah. So that um, yeah no definitely I I uh, and I, and I think I explained I, w I was a little bit nervous. So when, whenever it came to competing a task, I shut my hand up straight away to get it over and done with, so I could stand in the background and bask in the sunshine and do some flirting with Jam Stan. But um, yeah, I, I wasn't. Um, I, I, I was a little bit nervous before the shooting competition, and I, I sunk about three cups of coffee before this. I, I wasn't exactly the steadiest hand in the West. Um, so, yeah. So I, I, I guess that that that's the other thing comes into it. Know, know your schedule and and prepare accordingly. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're going to go, if you're going to go out very early in the morning, then don't stay to, um, you know, don't stay up late at night. And um, and if you're going to go shooting, um, make sure you you know well practiced and you don't have the coffee the coffee shakes you you mentioned um a little while earlier that you're no longer guiding and i'm assuming that your wife isn't either but are you still within the industry or have you branched out and you're doing something to you've gone back to being a mediocre carpenter and a part-time teaching golf pro um no so um so so we're we're, we're kind of in touch with the industry. I, I think after we we left guiding, which is about three years after um, Safari Guide of the Year, um, our, our kids were getting to the age where we wanted to expose them to some um, other things in the world. Um, yet it, it's weird growing up with kids um, who live in the bush and get very excited when you go to a shopping mall and they see an escalator <laughs> or an elevator. Um, so we kind of we, we kind of felt that they needed to do something slightly different. So. Um, we actually took them on a on a two year gallop around the world. We went backpacking in Asia and um, road tripping through the Balkans and um, the, the rest of Europe. And um, we eventually wound up in Egypt. And I, I think we were we were kind of um, we were running out of a little bit of steam on our travels after about sort of two years. And we needed um, to make a super fast decision on where we were going to go, where we were going to live, what we were going to do. And the, the the family unanimously voted on on coming back to South Africa. Okay. Um, and it was just uh, um, having seen so much of the world, I, I think they unanimously, uh, the kids especially, agreed that we have the most um, beautiful, um, stimulating, vibrant sort of country on the planet. Um, so South Africa was a no-brainer. Um, I wanted to go and live at the coast, um, but everybody else wanted to come and live straight back in the bush, which is how we wound up in Hootsbreit. Um but while we've been on our, tra our travels, I, I guess we were looking for a way that we could get back into tourism or, or, or get back into safari, bush guiding, um, but not necessarily, you know, have to live at a remote sort of lodge. And um, one of the options um, that was available was to get involved in, in, in the sort of the commercial side of tourism. Um, and in this particular instance, it was um, getting involved in um, building software and programs and analytics to help um, lodge owners and, and other stakeholders in the industry um, kind of evaluate their business, do their financial reporting, look at trends. Um, so Kate and I basically, we became software developers. I, I, I think in the very early days back in Hootsbreak, um, Kate still did a bit of um, work for eco training. And mm -hmm. I think she went out and did some sort of guiding technique and sort of stuff. And I, yeah, really learned sort of software development and, and we now build sort of software and programs that um, really, really helps an industry grab hold of their big data and use oh. it for, for insights. It's fascinating um, how life hacks just turn around and turns a passion into, into software development. Uh, but the, I suppose the upside of that, Tom, is you don't have to get up at three o'clock in the morning to get a vehicle and coffee ready for your guests or go out in the pouring rain because one person on the vehicle wants to see wet impala that they've never seen before no for sure but but funny enough i was up at three o'clock this morning um <laughs> and that's because a, a janet ran through our bedroom chasing a dormouse and at that point 
um, I had a cup of coffee and opened up the computer and here I am. So figured, what um, the heck? <laughs> yeah. No, I, there's definitely um, we we are we are we are blessed. I mean, yeah. we 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 live in the bush. Uh, we get to see the Wahlberg's eagles coming back, and we celebrate when the first woodland kingfishers arrive home. Um, so we do live in the bush, and um, we're, we're kind of digital nomads. Um, oh, that, but that's that's so great, Tom. Thank you so much for giving up your time. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, who knows? Next time I'm in Hootspreet, I may come and see if there's yet another Jenna chasing a dormouse door mouse through your house, or if not, you can correct my putting skills, perhaps. David, I look forward to it. Take care. Cheers.